Today we're driving the 2023 Audi RS3. It's a car that's gunning for the title of hottest hatch in Australia under $100,000. And we've come to Tail and Bend outside of Adelaide, Australia's newest racetrack and the second longest in the world to do it. Now before I dive deep into the car, I thought I'd give you a quick overview of the headline changes. You can see the exterior styling changes, up front specifically, new LED headlights, deeper front fascia with the honeycomb grille, down the side, much deeper scalloping which accentuates that muscular stance, LED taillights at the rear. Inside the main changes are a new head up display for the first time on an RS3, we've got integrated sports seats, we've also got an updated Audi digital dash. Under the skin are some significant updates. You wouldn't know it from the engine though, it is Audi's signature 5 cylinder 2.5 litre turbocharged engine. Outputs are 294 kilowatts like before, torques up to 500 newton metres now which is up 20 newton metres. 7 speed dual clutch transmission and at the back this is where the magic now happens. Audi calls it the RS Torque Splitter, and we'll get to sample its skills later on today. But before we get into that, please do me a favor, make sure you like this video, and also hit subscribe so that when Drive drives new cars, you hear about it first. All right, let's get into the detail now. And if you don't mind, I'm going to refer to my notes because I don't want to forget anything. Let's start with the front changes. And you can see straight away a wider honeycomb grille here flanked by these two new air intakes to feed more air to the engine. We've got a lower front splitter and we've got LED matrix headlights here, which do this really cool light show when you unlock the car, including in that checkered flag area, they spell out RS3. Now if you look at the front, you can see it's got a wider stance, a wider front track by 33 millimetres. The rear track's been increased only 10 millimetres, so if you get this car on the right angle, you can actually see it's got a narrower rear track than it has at the front. It's going to be interesting to see what that does to its dynamics. Okay, moving down the side now, and you can see straight away the deep scalloping that I was talking about that really pulls the muscular all-wheel drive stance to your attention. It's 10 mil lower than before, which means it's 25 millimeter lower than a standard RS3. We've got little side outlets here for airflow, which channel air out of the wheel, out of the brakes, and down the side of the car. They're said to have an actual purpose rather than just being visible. We'll find out shortly. Now, all RS3s have what Audi calls the standard black pack. You can see black wheels, you can see black around the daylight openings, black on the wing mirrors, and also black carbon fiber on the rear wing. Okay, brakes are 375 millimeter six piston calipers, should be just the job for this racetrack. And of course, we're wearing 19 inch performance rubber. Interestingly, Audi will option a set of semi-slick Trofeo R tires on if you do intend to do a lot of racetrack work. Okay, moving down to the back, come with me please. And we can see new LED tail lights, which again do a sort of a light show like the front ones. We've got that sort of honeycomb treatment reflected here and typical Audi RS to very large exhausts. Now the exhausts this time around have a variable flap, which when you activate the dynamic driving modes, opens up and lets more of that five cylinder roar do its thing. All right, now let's have a look at the interior story. And since I'm standing at the back, let's start with the boot. Now the Audi Sportback has a smaller boot than the sedan. This one's 280 litres or thereabouts. The sedan has 320 litres. And you can see it's got Audi's 40-20-40 split fold. All right, let's jump into the back seat now. Okay, now into the back seat. Uh, it's cosy in here. I wouldn't say I've got a lot of room, but I would be okay back here. I've got a little bit of knee room here. A good amount of headroom. Uh, what else have I got? I've got a couple of air vents back here to help airflow. A couple of small USB charging ports. Leather trim, of course. There's a little bit of scalloping to the seats, which might help hold me against some of the G-forces. The seat itself is pretty comfortable. And you can see we've got this honeycomb pattern repeated in here. Apart from that, fold-down armrest is nice to have with a couple of cup holders. And that is about it. So why don't we jump up to the front where all the action happens. 
Okay, now I'm gonna start here with the new 12.3 inch Audi virtual cockpit. It's been significantly updated and includes a couple of distinct RS modes which we're gonna discover when we get on track. As for the rest of it, you can see the interior is really nice. It's high quality, it talks premium. We've got leather up here, we've got a bit of a sort of a chrome, buffed chrome with carbon fiber inlay. You can actually get an option which replaces that with carbon fiber if that's your thing. 12.3-inch uh, screen here, as I said, but a 10.1-inch infotainment screen here. Very high-quality graphics on that one. Number of buttons, which help you interact with both this and also the HVAC controls, which come up in another small digital display here. We've got the obligatory wireless phone charger in front of the transmission tunnel. A couple of USB charging ports there. Drive select, which will come in handy later as we adapt to the racetrack. Uh, start stop button we all know about that let me talk to you about the driving position these new seats with integrated headrests feel incredibly supportive there's a lot of bolstering going on there which I'm gonna like in terms of driving position itself the steering wheel adjusts up and down and also in and out so that should allow me to get very comfortable indeed apart from that you know what I'm not going to talk too much more because I'm pretty keen to drive this car and after all, that's where this car is gonna sink or swim. So let's get stuck in. All right, so here we go. We're in the RS3, we're on the racetrack. This will be interesting. Okay, the car is set up into dynamic mode, which gives me the stiffest suspension, the sharpest throttle response, the fastest gear changes, Oh, hang on, we're going through a sweeper. <laughs> Basically, this is as angry as this car gets. I wish I didn't have to wear a helmet so I could really hear how that five-cylinder engine sounds. But as we're doing speeds, well, I believe, beyond 200 kilometers an hour, it's probably a good thing that I'm wearing some safety gear. Oh, okay. I botched that corner. I could feel the front end push. So as tricky as that torque splitter is, there's still a bit of push if you get clumsy with it like I just did. Now I didn't tell you much about the torque splitter. It's basically a very tricky rear diff that can apportion drive across the rear axle to either wheel. It can go full 100% to the left rear wheel or the right rear wheel if it wants to. You know the RS3 is all-wheel drive, so it's always had the smarts to go front to back, and it's also always had the smarts to go across the front axle. So going across the rear axle is new. And Audi says it transforms this car. Maybe one way to explain it to you is imagine you've got somebody behind you, and they've got, as I break for the first corner, and they've got hands on both the backs of your shoulder blades, and they're pushing you with both hands really hard for you to want to turn from your path right now if they take their right hand off and only push you with their left hand your body just wants to turn that's kind of the same principle that this rear splitter is using instead of the rear axle just blindly pushing the car forward it's actually using the outside wheel to push the car around to actually help the front axle and coming out of these corners, I can really feel it doing its thing. It feels like this car all of a sudden has a lot more cornering speed. A lot more cornering traction. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, but if you overcook it, you can still understeer why. <laughs> oh. This is quite amazing. The brakes are doing really well too. I am impressed. This car is a different car to the one I introduced you to on the track earlier. So it doesn't have the carbon ceramics. But so far we've done a couple of laps and it's still standing up to the punishment. Whoa! See, there was a little bit of a little bit of attitude from the rear there coming out of that. It's actually quite fun. Whoa. <laughs> This car is a lot of fun. 
It's basically giving me the best of a rear wheel drive world at the same time as having the best of all wheel drive. What's not to like about that? Okay, now what about the rest of the car? Well, this is pretty extreme, right? We're on a racetrack and we're pulling crazy G's at every corner. And the seats in this car, there is a little less lateral support than I would like. But there's still a fair bit there I can lean on it. You might see I'm sort of sliding around in the seat a little bit. The steering, for my taste, is a touch light. I wouldn't mind a bit more heft in it, but that's neither here nor there. As far as everything else in this car and what it's doing, there's very little to complain about. This is a properly quick car, but it feels like an accessible performance car. So far it hasn't scared me, it hasn't snapped. It's just given me the best access to all the power that it's got. Okay, that's the end of our fun. And I've got to tell you, the RS3 is, it's a lot of fun. And it's fast. I've tasted enough of the Audi RS3 to know I really like it. And I would really like more time to discover just how much they've moved the performance envelope. Because it feels so much more tractable and adjustable than the previous generation. It feels like it's working with you in the corners rather than just tolerating the corners. What they've done is just so impressive. And that's it, we're back in the pits. So remember, if you like this video guys, do us a favor, yeah? Hit like on the video and also subscribe so that when Drive drives new cars, you guys hear about it first. As for me, I think my time is up, sadly. <laughs>